In this video we're going to be talking about enzymes. We're going to firstly define an enzyme and what they do. We'll then look at the two models that work simultaneously, the lock and key model and the induced fit model. We'll then look at some factors affecting enzyme activity as well as the need for coenzymes and cofactors. An enzyme is a type of biological catalyst, a catalyst being something that controls the rate of a reaction. Now, when we talk about reactions, we're talking about the chemical processes that are happening inside an organism, and the sum of all these reactions is referred to as metabolism. When an enzyme works to control the rate of the reaction, usually speeding it up, it is not used up as part of the reaction. So we have an enzyme at the start of the reaction. Once the reaction is finished, we still have the same enzyme. It's not used up or destroyed. This means that it can be reused over and over again, and we only need enzymes in small amounts. Enzymes are specific in their action. So one enzyme will catalyze one particular chemical reaction. And they're proteins, so they're made of proteins or amino acids, and as such have a specific three-dimensional structure. So the way that the side groups of the different amino acids fold together causes the enzyme to have a particular 3D structure. That three-dimensional structure means that only specific substrates can bind with the active site of that enzyme. And when they do, they bond what is called an enzyme-substrate complex. Now, the enzyme-substrate complex lowers the activation energy that is required for that reaction, therefore allowing that reaction to proceed and allowing it to proceed much faster than it usually does. And we refer to this as the lock and key model in that each lock has a specific key that goes with it. So the specificity of those enzymes is the lock and key model. How the enzyme lowers the activation energy is explained by the induced fit model. So the active site is not quite a perfect match for the substrate. So the substrate can bind to that active site but results in a slight deformation of the enzyme. So what this means is that that enzyme is slightly deformed or slightly twisted and is putting pressure on that substrate to break into the products so that the active site can be cleared and the enzyme can go back to its low energy state. Uh, so this is the induced fit model where the substrate doesn't quite fit uh, the enzyme and that's why it reduces the activation energy needed for that reaction to occur. Now enzyme activity refers to how well the enzyme actually does its job, how fast it works, and they work at a best at a particular pH and a particular temperature. Now depending on where the enzyme is found in the body is usually depends on the pH that it works at best. Uh, for example, enzymes that are found in the stomach need to be active at a much lower pH than enzymes found elsewhere in the body. However, most uh, enzymes, at least for the human body or the mammalian body, uh, work best at around 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. Outside this range, or as you get further away from that optimal uh, pH and temperature, the activity or how well the enzyme works decreases. And if you get too far away from that optimal point, uh, being a protein, it can actually denature, which means that it's permanently damaged and doesn't start working again once it goes back to a whatever the other temperature was. So, for example, an enzyme might work best at 37.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, however, it can work uh, between, say, 35 and 40 degrees Celsius. However, if the temperature increases to, for example, 50 degrees Celsius, that enzyme is permanently damaged and reducing the environment that that enzyme's in isn't going to cause it to start working again. Okay, so, and different enzymes have different tolerances for both pH and temperature. 
some enzymes require another molecule to be present for them to work properly. Uh, and this is a non-protein, so it's not another enzyme, it's just another molecule. If it's an organic molecule, we refer to this as a coenzyme. Uh, so vitamins are organic molecules, so for example, vitamin C is a coenzyme. Whilst if they're inorganic, uh, we refer to these as cofactors, and potassium is a cofactor that is needed in some reactions. In this video, we've looked at enzymes being biological catalysts that increase the rate of reaction but are not used as part of the reaction. We've looked at the specificity and the lock and key model being that one enzyme is specific to one chemical reaction. We've talked about the induced fit model where the substrate doesn't quite fit the active site correctly and causes a deformation of the enzyme. Uh, reducing the activation energy required for the reaction to take place. We've looked at enzyme activity and how moving away from, a, from an optimal uh, pH and temperature reduces the activity and if moving too far away can permanently damage the enzyme. And we've looked at the need of coenzymes or cofactors which are molecules that are not enzymes that are needed in for an enzyme to work correctly.